Hello once again to another Age of Empires game. It's again Dr. Fagnesty versus Electron Slayer. Electron Slayer twice Mongols. With the Dr. Fagnesty. Fagnesty. I still have a problem with it. <laughs> um, plays Abbasid. I. They asked me again to take a look at the game. Um, to be fair, I don't have the um, best information about Mongols because I don't play them really much. But why, what I personally have seen, if you want the wood start, I would go on the nearest tree and you can just place the gear next to it. It's quite efficient. So you take the first tree, get the 150 uh, wood you want from it with the 5 villagers. The 6 villager runs to the stone outcrop and builds the Uvo. And the other 5 take the tree, you place the Uvo next to it and they collect once the wood and then you put them on the sheep. And 2 on the wood, I think that's the build. And then you either go a barracks or you go a stable for the tower rush or earlier question. Or if you want an EQ start, you also can get a uh, uh, the thing that spawns sheep. I have no idea how it's called. I'm forgetting it all the time. I think the House of Wisdom is a little bit early. It doesn't matter that much, but if you can delay it a little bit, it's most of the time better because you get a little bit faster resources. But yeah, you have to commit the time so 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 it doesn't matter that much. Move the gear to collect sheep, I quite like that. Okay. Um you want the guys on food, the uh, if you don't use the gear on the tree, you can use it to collect the sheep, but you don't go on gold, then you wait until the gear co uh, returns and then you collect the gold. So one will... Ah, uh, yeah. It's over. Still a little bit late, but yeah. Okay, this is a really early wheelbarrow. So if you want a map like this, it's very... It's not the best to tower wash. It's relatively easy to wall. It's relatively open versus... Abyssid, you don't really want to tower wash anyway. So you can, in theory... The wheelbarrow, I'm okay with. Not the biggest of fan. Also, if you want it, maybe get the improved rebuild instantly, but I think that's too expensive at the moment. So I probably would just get a pasture here. Um, you get it at the Ubu and rally to the TC. And that's a quite a good economic start for Mongols. And yeah, you can get rebuild, but I don't think it's that important. And yeah, if you want to get V-Bear Wall, I wouldn't move the gear away, I would place the gear next to gold. The other, other option is to place the Uvo if you want to get the improved upgrade, but that's the same cost in stone again, and you don't have stores hard on stone. So, in theory, you can collect gold until you get 350. Okay, he builds the pasture next to it, that's also fine. I hope he moves it up here. No, it doesn't, okay. Um, if you have the um, pasture in the Uwe range, it double produces sheep. So it produces a sheep at the double of the weight, so it's quite a lot better, also it's only 70 seconds for a sheep instead of 140. And... 
I really think you should get the pasture first. Place the Uwu up here. You can, glow, I think, get two guys or three guys on uh, gold with that. After that, and you just keep collecting until you get uh, 350 gold. And then you get the improved version of Rebarrow. I think that's a lot better than just getting Rebarrow now and maybe later improved Rebarrow. Also, you uh, don't waste the movement distance here. Um, that's too much guys on wood. You, I think you want maximum amount of three guys on wood. Normally, I think two. Also, you start with five on wood. Get one for back, and I think then you split off two. The rest, you put them all on food, and you put back two of them back on the next food to the TC. But five is too much food. I would. And there are pastures next to the Uwu in best case. If the enemy moves out, you move it back to the TC, but. Especially early game, Uwus are quite important. And. You don't need that many pastures. Um, you need around a pasture for I think ten villagers or maybe eight. I think eight is. Aeon from Mongols pasture villagers. Okay, so the third of villagers you need on, so if you have 10, you need three pastures, that makes sense. So he has a good amount of pastures. Uh, in Uwe range it would be only one and a half, so with two pastures in the Uwe you would be fine. You would have 100 wood more, you could probably get one guy less on wood. And the problem is with that at the moment is here you get a lot of pastures and you get secure your late game food income, but you delay your age up timing and so the moment you hit feudal age, um, Abbasid will be on two or three TCs. Also, I'm not quite sure why he get got military wing. I understand military wing against Mongols in theory. If you get tower watch, you get military wing, but normally you scout your opponent. If you scout, he goes for early aggression, you go with military wing, and if not, you don't go it, especially not versus Mongols, but because usually you can't really harass the gold. Okay, you can have the over, that's quite nice. In this case, uh, yeah. Um, production buildings always next to the TC. Also, Deerstone, I'm not the biggest fan of. I would always go. I would go in 90% of the cases. Silver Tree. Deerstone is better if you want to stay in feudal age and you don't think you can trade. Also, with the late. Age up, I also think it's quite good. Uh, it's maybe better than Silver Tree because Silver Tree boom will never hit in time. The time it hits, he, um, Dr. 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 will be on three TCs and just out boom. Mongols really hard, also the mill would be up here a lot better because this berry brush is already covered by the TC. This berry brush too may I yet too also this one or here would be better. That's another thing. <laughs> forestry is an absolute shit upgrade. Improved forestry is good. So this one is actually good because you 
You can't chop it in one hit, that's in three hits. Or two hits, something like that. Uh, also, I'm not the biggest fan of the barracks in the stable, that's... You could have been on a second TC already. Also, horsemen aren't the way to go, you want to build Kashyx. Yeah, that's a nice catch. <laughs> the problem is he gets quite out eco at the moment. That's a really late second third CC. Not good enough for this. Does he want a fourth CC? And I think that's way too yeah. Um sixteen villagers and food. Um you divide it by three. That's six I yeah, five to six. That's eight, so that's too much. Past just three to two to three too much. If you had these two um, past just gone and the barracks didn't build You could have had a second TC already and you would be Not as far behind in eco Bad. Okay, that I really don't like. Um, that's one thing with Mongols. You don't go Castle Age. The moment you hit Castle Age, you lost the game as Mongols. <coughs> so what I... There's two things you wanna do with Mongols. You either play... Dark Age Aggression with um, Tower Rush or with Horseman. So you build with double production either for Spearmen or for Horsemen or two Horsemen. Um, and you just trying to harass and get idle time out of the enemy and be annoying. Or with a Tower Rush, a typical Tower Rush. If that doesn't work. Um, you have already a problem, but that's not the big of a deal. But you usually go instantly into a, a silver tree. And with double production, you can set up the silver tree, or you would just move the silver tree in the corner of the map, and then you start to get the trade up. Uh, you don't. You want to get the minimal amount of pastures in the early game. And the moment you hit feudal age, you get as many stables, archer ranges and barracks as you can and you mass military like a madman. And with Kashyyyks you wait, you trying to do as much damage as you can with them and behind that you mass spearmen, archers and you get a blacksmith best of case next to the Uwu. Yeah, it doesn't matter because most upgrades in feudal age besides siege engineer improved, doesn't matter at all. You can get improved upgrades, also you can move the Get the archer range with T, uh, unpack it, and the ram can't attack it anymore. And you can move it under your TC. Um, you never want to lose buildings as Mongols, it's really bad. Also, with the Dark Age a horseman, it forces the enemy into action. With Abyss, this isn't the best because of the military wing, but you can normally burn down a house or something like that, or a mining camp. Also, you can stop stone mining for quite a while, so he can get a second TC, while you can get a second TC. And the most important thing is, you don't go Castle Age with Mongols anymore. Before, uh, Mongols only had more or less TC, uh, trade TC or Castle Age rush. After the early, uh, Dark Age question, and now it's you can do the above still, but... 
Castle Age Rush is probably the worst idea you ever can do because Mongols is probably the worst Castle Age Sith now. Your Kashyyyk are just so bad in Castle Age compared to Lancers or Knights. Um, so I would say you every resource you get in Dark Age and Feudal Age you want to spend into more military and trade. And with the trade you can you buy food and stuff like that. And you go instantly Imperial Age. But that's more or less when you're at turn a pop. You more or less trade your armies non-stop in them and then you go a relatively fast Imperial Age. As you go Castle Age and then instantly Imperial Age because you have the resources for it. And you still can produce army. Um, if you want to go the only reason you want to go Castle Age with Mongols is to get the relics. You get a Shaman Tent or however it's called. Toya Tent next to the Ubu. Double produce to um, Shamans. And you collect the uh, relics. But yeah, as I said, going Castle Age is really bad. Imperial Age is fine again. The problem is with what Electron Slayer does is he just rushes, rushes Imperial Age versus a 3TC Abbasid. Abbasid is fully set up, will hit Castle Age in the next minutes with around 80 villagers. And. Okay, production setup, not really good production setup. Also, I don't really... Un okay, he goes cold shaming because he thinks he needs Imperial Age first behind the two. The problem I see now is Abyssid. Yeah, Mongols is Imperial Age and that's quite nice for them, but they can't afford any army. No. So I think you, because Mongols is one of the strongest Siths now in Feudal Age, I think you just want to stay Feudal Age and boom up with trade most of the time, or with two 3TCs behind that, if you can afford it. I like that he's at least uh, uh, halfway active on the map. Mango die. I don't think you want to play Mango die. Mango die are expensive as hell and aren't worth that cost. They are nice to harass, but he's um Abyssin will go for archers probably. Also Camel Archers hard, hard counter Mango die. Camel Archers have uh, the same range, has um, higher movement speed, deal more, more base damage, has more HP and debuff Mago die. So yeah, Mago die um the best thing you can go, to be fair. <laughs> the problem um, what I see is Mongols has already lost because it will go into the late game and Abyssid has the best, better calf in the late game, has the better infantry in the late game, has the better economy in the late game, has the better trade in the late game, and has a better transition to it also, and cheaper upgrades and so on and so on. So, Mongols can't really fight Abyssid in Castle or Imperial Age at all, I would say. In Castle Age, the basic archer loses one versus one. The man at arm hard lose. Uh, the basic archer loses hard. The basic man at arm loses hard. Uh, horsemen are even. The problem is Abyssid have a 25% debuff, so horsemen are worse for Abyss, uh, for Mongols if one camel is with them. Magidae are worse than camel archers. A lot worse now. Uh, Kashyyyk are worse than Lancers from Abyssid. And a lot worse than... They are better waiting than Camels, but they... Versus Camels, they do noth nothing at all. They get shredded by Camels. The basic Spearman hard wins versus Abyssid in mass. 
so all infantry wins. Even the Das Mongols have improved gunpowder. Ne, improved chemistry and they doesn't have interesting. So also the eco uh, the villagers are worse economic wise in late later stages of the game. They don't have stone walls, they don't have keeps. That's a good weight, I like that. Also the trade scales worse than ever the trade in that game. Yes. Only two traders and gets quite improved stone uh, gets stone commerce interesting. And yeah, this game will track out a little bit, but I will will just run over Mongols I think. Production is a little bit low. If Mong uh, also Abyssid crossbows are stronger than Mongol crossbows and Abyssid hand cannoneers are also stronger than Mongol hand cannoneers because they have 15% more HP. So, and they can get plus 2, plus 2 armor. So, yeah, that's just really, really hard. If Mongols, of course, if Mongols have, in theory, better siege in Imperial, and not even that, because Abyssin has Cold Wings and Mongols don't, so, yeah. But, in theory, if Mongols can survive to the 60, 70, 80 minute mark and the complete map is mined out, Mongols will have an advantage because of their double production with stone, they can afford a lot more things than Abyssin will do. I will can afford it, especially with the white stupa. So, I think Electron Slayer uh, listened to the, what I said that you can't go really castle edge with them, but the problem is the rushing Imperial Age isn't really the correct thing, I think. The correct thing is adding slowly trade, or as fast as trade as you can, plus a lot of feudal uh, get a lot of feudal age army so you can boom behind it also a map like this um, a dog here and a dog here would be amazing and Abyssin can't really go for the dogs because you as mongols just can burn it down for free resources Not enough units and the siege was exposed. So. I'm also not quite happy about Dr. Thugnesty's decision to go. Imperial Age, I think he just could have put down a lot more military production, just pushed through the metal with a lot. And you know, all in. Margot, I. They have. I uh, have really good damage output for units, but. The problem is you invest so much in their mobility with them, and he can't really use the mobility, especially on a map like this. Especially. The stone wards, to be fair, they can get through here, back here. Yeah, that's a... Uh, I think this map is absolutely horrible for Mongols. Yeah, and that's just the equal difference.
maybe he can do something with the mess maggot that I doubt, doubt it because he can't get even in there but Yay, they got in. That was a nice word. That's a problem Dr. Sector still has. He only builds men at arms uh, melee units and they actually suck versus Magadai. Just could have gone camel archers or archers and they absolutely would shred it through everything Mongols builds more or less, especially archers at the moment because they're so cheap. Yeah, can I place with you what? Jesus. Maybe focus the uh, actual the scary outposts. That's way too much siege and not enough infantry. We need them around double the numbers of spearmen here. Yeah, slowly gets the numbers, that's okay. That's a typical micro mistake. These units has one job and one job only. They stand around these two, four, six, eight mega die and mega nails and just protect them. That's the only thing they have to do. Stand around and protect them. That's all everything you have to do. Don't move away like that. If you move away like that, if you had ten horsemen, everything would have gone. Right now, and you just would have lost 50k resources. You probably still lose it versus the two horsemen. Okay, so yeah, I think Silver Tree is a lot better than Deerstone, way less pastures, faster feudal age, <laughs> and dark. Okay. You don't have to go faster feudal age, but you have to do go more dark age aggression, I think. Also either fast feudal age or dark age aggression, but not um, dark age boom. That's a dark age transition boom. That is really bad. Rather save if you do something like that. Rather save the wood, and you can go for a timing where you age up and get instantly a second TC. That would be also okay, I think, but. And V bear and stuff like that. But I think getting a fast feudal age with a silver tree and then you bo eco boom with a silver tree, also you try to keep the silver tree production as much up as, as you can by, uh, while you also not sacrificing military production. So military production goes first. Um, and then the silver tree and the TC is uh, the silver TC should run non-stop. The military should run non-stop, and if you have resources over, you get it into trade or mili more military production. And the only reason you go to Castle Age is because you hit the 200 supply uh, limit and can um, produce more units while you are trading with your units. And you no know, more production is also useless, so you go just age up to castle age, and then more or less imperial age instantly, and then you upgrade all your army with the. Uh, also, I would say you need around thirty k food and ten k. Uh, nah, thirty k is too much. If you have ten k food and ten k gold in feudal age, you can age up. I would say. That should be enough with the trade still going to get all your upgrades and both ages you want, also all the upgrades you want in the case. 
and I would probably play with Kashyyyk and Archers and maybe a few Spearmen. Or Kashyyyk, Archer, Spearmen. Should be a fine combo uh, unit comp. You probably want to transition into Horsemen later on because Horsemen are better than Kashyyyk in Castle Age and Imperial Age, I think. And Kashyyyk's just a raiding. I think you want Kashyyyk as raiding units and Horsemen as fighting units. I think it's better. And yeah, probably trade and more question. You, so you rush through the age and you want more or less non, uh, instantly cash checks out. That's also why you want to start with a stable because you already have the stable then out in dark age with two horsemen or four horsemen in dark age. You can have uh, two, three or four horsemen in the dark age. You can have us with a uh, horseman. Delay the enemy age up, then you just transition into a feudal age around 5 to 6 minutes. It doesn't delay you that much. Your opponent is probably more delayed by the horseman, and after that, you follow up with Kashyyyk and you wait your heart out with Kashyyyk while you're mass massing archer spearmen and more Kashyyyk behind that. Getting all your military and eco upgrades, getting the trade behind that, and if the enemy doesn't die in feudal age. You win if the enemy goes castle age, you all in him at the moment. So if you scout him, he is aging up, or he the sign pops up, he aged up you more or less. You move all your army into his base and kill everything he has because he probably won't have the resources. If the en if he won't die, you probably have to age up as well, but you probably can't should kill him. And yeah, I hope that was helpful and see you guys. Bye.